Yes, we were talking about the characteristics of uh, the functional paradigm. And if I go back a little bit, where we said that a different model existed, uh, a different model than the conventional uh, von Neumann machine model, we said that the computation proceeds not by modifying the state, but by rewriting expressions. And I think it's about time to look at what we mean by rewriting expressions. So rewriting. Uh, this is the procedure used to transform a complex expression into its value. And we call this process reduction. We're reducing the expression. Uh, so, if we have a complex expression, a sub-expression of the form function applied to an argument is textually replaced by the body of the function in which the formal parameter is replaced in its turn by the actual parameter. So, we're doing textual replacement. So, I think it's best to explain this with an example. So let's assume that we are calling the function fact with the argument 3. Uh, and let's assume that fact is defined in the following way, which is inside the parenthesis here. So fact is defined uh, as a function, as a nameless function, uh, that takes the argument n, and then the body of, of the function says if n is equal to 0, then return 1, else return n times fact of n minus 1. So what we're doing here, when we're trying to reduce this expression fact 3, is that we rewrite it. So we textually replace the body of the function fact with which is inside the parenthesis and the argument is 3 is just written on the right hand side here. So to reduce that expression we, s we replace, we basically do uh, as we did in lambda calculus we re remove the lambda which is f and n here and we replace the formal parameter n with the argument 3. So we will get if 3 is equal to 0, n is 3, then 1, else 3 times fact of 3 minus 1. And uh, 3 is not equal to 0, so the, the, the then part is false, the else part is true, so we reduce this expression, the if expression, to 3 times fact of 3 minus 1. And 3 minus 1 is 2, so it becomes 3 times fact of 2. Now then we have a complex expression, and we take the sub-expression fact of 2 and rewrite that one. And we do it exactly the same way as, way as we did earlier, fact of t 2 becomes a uh, replace fact with its body basically f and n if n is equal to 0 then 1 else n times fact of n minus 1 and then we send 2 as an argument to it when we send 2 as an argument we drop the lambda and we have uh, if 2 is equal to 0 then 1 else 2 times fact of 2 minus 1 2 is not equal to 0 so the else part is true as earlier and it becomes 2 times fact of 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so we have 2 times fact of 1. And once again, we have to rewrite fact. And we do it exactly the same way as before, uh, until we come to fact of 0. Fact of 0, we replace fact with uh, its definition. And it says then, if n is equal to 0, then 1, else n times fact of n minus 1. And we send uh, 0 as an argument should be here, not 1, should be 0 as an argument. And then it says we drop the lambda and instead of n we have 0, so we have if 0 is equal to 0 then 1. And finally the base case is true 
and we will return one so we get one as a result here and then we have all the values needed to compute the result three times two times one which is six so notice that we use this procedure of rewriting to reduce the original expression fact 3 to its value. So with the exception of the arithmetic calculations and the use of the conditional expression, the conditional expression if, all of the rest of the computation proceeded by symbolic manipulation of strings. We just replaced the, the uh, uh, function name with its uh, definition. We didn't use the variables. We didn't update any variables. Because uh, we are in a functional programming uh, paradigm here. So if we now look at the fundamental ingredients in a, in a functional programming language. So from a syntactic point of view, there are no commands because there is no state to modify. But there are only expressions. And we have two kinds. We have abstraction, which is a con uh, allows the construction of an expression f and x, uh, uh, arrow x, which denotes a function that transforms the formal parameter x to this expression exp. And this is called abstraction because the expression exp is abstracted from the specific value of x. So this is abstraction, as we call this in the lambda calculus, this was called lambda abstraction. And then we have application of an expression. So we, we have an apl application of an expression fx to another expression ax. And we write it this way. We have the function, functional expression on the left-hand side. We have the argument expression on the right-hand side. Now, as we have talked about earlier, in, a functional, in the functional programming paradigm, functions can be passed as functions to other functions. So functions can be arguments to other functions. Functions can be returned as the result of other functions. Uh, functions are first-class citizens in that way. Function, this term is used when functions can be passed as arguments and function can be returned as functions, then it's often said that functions are first-class citizens. And as a consequence, in the functional programming paradigm, there is perfect homogeneity between programs and data, because programs are also data. Since functions can be passed as result, as as argument to functions, and functions can be returned as results, then functions are data as well. So programs are data. Now, <clears throat> from the semantic viewpoint, in the in the fun in the functional programming world, a program consists of a series of value definitions. So we're defining values. We're not changing state with defining values and each definition inserts a new association, in, association, association into the environment and it can require the evaluation of complex expressions. The presence of higher order functions and the possibility of defining recursive functions makes this definition mechanism very flexible and powerful. And we will, in the, in the coming lectures, when we will be talking about specific uh, functional programming languages, we will see examples of uh, of this. How you know how powerful uh, this mechanism can be. Now th there are two terms that we need to talk about here. One is radex, and the other is reductum. Reductum. Uh, 
so a radex is just a, a uh, acronym for reducible expression radex reducible expression meaning an expression that can be re reduced and radix is, is then an application of the form we have a function and then we have an argument we have a function definition we have an abstraction and then we have an argument so we're applying we're sending the argument to the function so this is obviously something that can be reduced we can reduce it by by dropping the lambda and substituting uh, for x the value of the argument. The reductum of our at x is the expression which is obtained by replacing in body each occurrence of the formal parameter x by a copy of argument. So the reductum is what results after the reduction. And the beta rule, which we actually called beta reduction in lambda calculus, is the, re is the process of replacing the radex by its reductum. So the re rad radex is something that can be reduced. The reductum is the result after reduction. Now, uh, the second thing that we discuss here regarding the functional programming paradigm is the evaluation, the evaluation strategies. So let's take an example first here. Let's assume that we introduce a association in the environment, val g is equal to a function that takes an argument and returns an expression here which again is a function, uh, anonymous function, applied to the value 2. Then the question is, well, if we apply the value 2 to this anonymous function, we drop the land and we get 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. So you can actually see that the function that takes the argument x, the result of the functions, is independent of the value x here. The x does not appear in the body of the function. So the result is independent of the value x. So the question is, do we get a 3 back when we introduce this value g, or we do we get the function back? Do we get a function back, or do we get 3 back? Um, if we try this actually, we try this in ML, and I can say, well, g is equal to, I'm associating the name g with a function that takes one argument, and the result of that function is the result of applying to an anonymous function. And what I get back here is not the value 3. Uh, the, the ML interpreter says that what I get back is a function that maps some value to an integer. Maps some value to an integer. Uh, so I'm getting back a function that maps some value, which is the y, to an integer. And uh, it's in, this, in the second tier, the body of a function is only evaluated when it is called. And this is adopted for all functional languages in common use. So the evaluation does not occur under the under the abstraction itself. So when we introduce the abstraction here, the function, the anonymous function inside the parenthesis was not called 
I did, we did not apply to to that anonymous function immediately. It only happens when we call the function g. So if I do g of 1, I get the value 3 back. It's when I call the function g, when it is at that point, when I call the function g, that this anonymous function is evaluated when 2 is sent to that function. And notice, as we said earlier, the function g is independent of the value that I supply it with. g of 1, g of 2, g of 3 will always get back 3. Because the argument, the formal parameter here, x, is um, not used in the body of the function. The result is independent from that value. 